So, what makes me cranky about Chappaquiddick? That this movie wasn't made 40 years ago when it might have done some good? If Ted Kennedy had been revealed then as the morally bankrupt, incompetent boob that he was, perhaps we could have shattered the saintly image of the Kennedys and rid ourselves of this clown before he got to spend a lifetime pushing increasingly problematic policies. Eh, who am I kidding? If they had made it back then, old Teddy Boy would have been the hero of this story. Which, remarkably, he isn't here. Though Chappaquiddick does make Kennedy look far more sympathetic than I'd care to see, it's still impressive how thoroughly it destroys his character by the end, considering the quality of the film itself. Usually, if you want a movie that's going to be this honest about a liberal icon, it's created by conservatives who have no idea what they're doing for explicitly political purposes, so it ends up looking and sounding like a high school film project. Chappaquiddick, on the other hand, has all of the pedigree of modern cinema. It's a solid drama all of its own, and as much as it flirts with the idea of Kennedy being a tragic figure who made a few stupid decisions one night, when the time comes, it reveals him to be every bit as awful a human being as leaving a girl to slowly asphyxiate in a car he crashed while driving drunk should have made everyone think he was at the time. The Lion of the Senate has every opportunity to do the right thing, to show he has some sense of morality, and at every turn, he chooses not to, because he's supposed to be the head of the family and the next president, and God forbid he disappoint daddy. I really have to commend Jason Clark for his turn as Kennedy. Not only did he take on such an unsympathetic character and bring him to life in a way that doesn't turn him into a hero, but he also managed to pull off the Massachusetts accent without sounding retarded. Usually, uh, when you hear it in the movies, it sounds a lot like, uh, Mayor Quimby. He's not the only one, but it's his movie, to the exclusion of just about every other character, in fact. Even the ill-fated Mary Jo Kopechny, who's played by Kate Mara, doesn't get much in the way of screen time, which I think is the movie's biggest failing. This really should be her story, the tragic tale of a young woman who totally bought into the dream and then died at the hands of the boozed-up heir apparent, who gets away with it and goes on to spend the rest of his life as a big political hero. Instead, it's more of a story of how a craven opportunist survived the worst week of his life, because, as the movie helpfully demonstrates, people wanted him to get away with it. They were still enamored by the image of his brothers, you know, great men taken too soon, and thus all too willing to swallow the BS he and his political conspirators dished out because otherwise the great progressive dream would die with his reputation, and the fulfillment of his brother's historic ambition to get us to the moon might have been tainted by the scandal. Easy to pretend like it was just an accident and make jokes about it. It is once again a reminder of just how powerful media and pop culture are, from both ends. Had he been a no-name Republican, opposing something they cared about, the media would have torn him apart piece by piece back then. Rather than giving him a free 15 minutes on all three networks to play the victim of a tragedy of his own making, they would have ripped open every inconsistency, tracked down every witness, and put Mary Jo Kopechny's grieving parents front and center to demand he resign in disgrace. Hell, they probably would have edited his own words to make him look even more guilty, all the while encouraging the prosecution to throw the biggest, heaviest book they could find at the guy. And it was always one thing to know he left Kopechny to die and conspired to cover up his culpability. It is quite another to watch as she begs for help, while the rising water slowly squeezes the air around her out of the car, particularly when juxtaposed with Kennedy planting the seeds for his cover-up and then heading off to sleep. It's a scene that has more power than a thousand news articles ever could, and most people will never see it. Because this isn't a fun movie, this isn't a summer blockbuster, and it's not a JFK-level conspiracy tale that will thrill you until the end. It's just a reasonably honest look at a crime that went unpunished. That's why I'm tempted to recommend seeing this at full price this weekend, just to encourage the filmmakers to make more of this kind of thing. But it's not that good. As I said, I think there was a huge missed opportunity to let us know more about who Kopechny was, which is why I don't think this movie hits nearly as hard as it should. There are also a few places where the score felt a little overbearing, and that certainly doesn't help. Plus, it's not the kind of thing that needs to be seen on the big screen to get the point. And of course, it's several decades too late. So I'm just going to be generous here and say that if you have any interest in politics or history, go catch a matinee this weekend. That's what I thought about Chappaquiddick anyway. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And hopefully I won't need to send an army of political fixers and sycophants to convince you to subscribe to the channel for more reviews.